You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Welcome, Remy. How are you? How are, how are things going on your end? Fine. I'm fine to be here. I'm based yeah. in the south of France, oh. <coughs> and it's sunny, right? <laughs> how are things in France right now? So the COVID is uh, pretty uh, spreading uh, quickly. Okay. But uh, they are relatively low impact on people's health. So that's sure the good thing here. Absolutely. Is it a nice weather this time of year or is it kind of coming out of the winter, I guess? Okay. So we are just uh, in the winter, but yeah. in the south of France, uh, sometimes winter is close to the summer, right? Uh, we have very yeah. good weather here. It's not <laughs> California, but not far away. Very nice. Well, look, to kick this off, what I'd love to do is have you give a quick introduction about yourself to our audience. Just tell them who you are, kind of the role you play uh, at Semtech, and just any background you think will be relevant. Okay, so I'm Rémi Lorrain. I'm in charge of the LoRaWAN Operator Business Development at Semtech globally. I am the chairman of the LoRa Alliance Operator Community and also the chairman of the LoRa Alliance EMEA region. I've been working for 20 years in the telco business, and then I moved to IoT and joined in 2017 Semtech. Semtech is a high-end silicon company present in any infrastructure, critical infrastructure. So we are really on the high end. We are not as big as Intel, but our key focus is innovation. And these last years, of course, we developed IoT. Semtech owns the IP of the LoRa technology, the massive IoT uh, LoRa technology. Right. So, so talk to me um, a little bit about kind of the the main or topic today for for us is talking about kind of the satellite space and the role you all are kind of playing in that. I know there was um, a recent announcement made with. Uh, from Semtech uh, around kind of the role you're all playing in the satellite space. Could you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, sure. I will start from one KPI. Today, only 10% of the globe is covered by terrestrial network. Right. And you know that Massive IoT aims to solve problems that people have in any country, in any region, and not only in cities. Right. Specifically, logistics, uh, environment, agriculture. So... Houston, we have a problem. So to solve this problem, satellite uh, comes. And satellite, you know, is able to solve this coverage problem on 90% mm -hmm. of the globe. Second, satellite industry has been pivoting with lower cost to launch, lower cost to design the payloads. It's what we name this nano satellite industry and with low orbit satellites. And it brings an opportunity for satellite industry to solve the problem we have in massive IoT. Okay. Fantastic. So, so tell me a little bit about, so when we think of LoRa and LoRaWAN um, as a connectivity option for the space, how is this playing in with now satellite? Is this kind of, I, I, the way it kind of seems to me is that it's kind of filling the gaps of connectivity, as you kind of already mentioned, and allowing you really to be able to deploy kind of new opportunities and new solutions in the space. So, so the main thing I want to try to, I guess, get out here is when we're talking about the IoT space and we're talking about satellite connectivity, why is it so important for the IoT space? And, and how does it also work in with what you're doing on the LoRa side? Yes, like I said, if we want IoT to scale up, it's already growing, but it may scale really. And if we want to see the, let's say, logistics application, smart agriculture application, uh, fast growing, we need to deliver as any wireless technology a ubiquitous coverage. So since we will not be able to solve this coverage issue, we will not see this market really take off. That's our assumption. So therefore, we need an additional piece that is satellite. At the okay. same time, yeah. satellite has also step changed. For the last 40 to 50 years, satellite companies were used to develop proprietary setup. Every single satellite company was targeting a limited number of customers with a specialized 
protocol to connect the devices. Today, the big trend is that they may use the same protocol on Earth and in space. So okay. you leverage an existing protocol or standard and you use it on satellites. It's a complete mindset change that we see today. Uh, Lacuna Space <coughs> or EcoStar or Utelsat are playing this game to use a legacy terrestrial standard like LoRa LoRa One to develop in space. So in that case, your asset, your devices, your container will be able to connect to a terrestrial network when it, mm. it, it's there. And when you lose the connectivity for a terrestrial network, you connect to the satellite. <clears throat> so it's a seamless experience for your asset and you never lose the connectivity. Why can we do that this, uh, in 2022? Because the technology has changed. The cost to launch a satellite has been divided by X. Look at SpaceX, for instance. Yeah. The cost to build a satellite has been divided by 20. And so look at the nano satellites. So, and we see today a bullish market on both sides launching new constellation or leveraging existing geostationary const constellation like EcoStar, for instance, and developing LoRa, LoRa One technology standard on it. Okay. So, so let me ask then. So, for for companies out there who already deployed solutions using LoRa and LoRaWAN, does this just allow them to now have better improved connectivity with what they already have deployed, or is there changes that need to be made to existing solutions and existing deployments to fit with with um, kind of the launching of this? I would say that they have to do some small modification on the device. Okay. Before this period of uh, using the same standard for space and Earth, they have to change everything from the hardware to the software. Okay. It was very expensive and consuming a lot. Right. Today, you can take a legacy LoRa LoRa One device. You change the antenna. For sure, you need a nice antenna design. And you change the firmware. And there you go. Okay. So there is slighter change. Right. And when you design your device, that's the beauty. You can make them work both terrestrial and satellite. That's also a second advantage that we have today. Gotcha. So yes, answering to your question, it enables the customers to smoothly uh, fill the gap, fill the connectivity gap. Right, right. OK, that makes a ton of sense. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, so one of the last things I wanted to ask you real quick is, as we now talked about the technology, what it's going to enable, which industries do you think are going to be most impacted by this and see the most benefit and the most enablement and adoption when it comes to new solutions and use cases for the deployments? Uh, we do observe that the first, the early customers are the one operating in remote areas. Mm -hmm. Logistics and asset tracking is a key vertical sure. for satellite, for sure. Transportation, oil and gas, and smart agriculture are key verticals that are, I think, early adopters of this uh, satellite business. If Fantastic. We, back, we may also think that any linear infrastructure sure. can be poles across the US, can be a railway company willing to monitor the race. Everything that is linear across large regions may be a candidate to use satellite uh, connectivity as well. OK, that makes a ton, ton of sense. And now, I guess, is there an option for companies when they are deploying using these, uh, deploying with Laura and LoRaWAN to kind of default to the satellite side of things? Or is it something that's just going to seamlessly switch between both and you kind of have to be integrated in with both in order for this to kind of be available to you? You have two types of setup. Okay. Either I am an oil and gas company operating in Middle East Africa. Right. And I will never see in my region or in my local uh, place a 
terrestrial network. Okay. So I'm going to design my device to connect only to the satellite. Gotcha. Second case, I am a logistic uh, player with my containers uh, going through a port across the US, uh, go on a boat and so on. So in that case, I will switch from terrestrial and uh, satellite networks. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Perfect. Okay. That, that clears it up. Um, but, but thank you so much for taking the time here. Cause this is really interesting stuff. We've, it's been kind of talked about very, very loosely in some of my conversations in the past regarding satellite and bringing it in. So to see a company, that's already a pretty, you know, large leader in the connectivity space with Laura and Laura Wan to now also be expanding your capabilities into satellite to allow more seamless, seamless connection to enable more solutions and really massive IoT really become something um, is super fascinating. So I'm really glad you're able to take some time here to chat with me and elaborate on kind of this news that we heard about um, c coming out of, uh, of Semtech. So, so I really appreciate your time and we really look forward to kind of following along. What's the best way that our audience can kind of stay in the know of, of regarding this, this announcement and anything kind of coming out in the future uh, around this initiative? So stay tuned. Uh, you may reach out to Semtech uh, to get more information, but okay. 2022 will be the year of multiple commercial announcements for big satellite companies on the market. Yeah. Uh, I was referring to Lacuna Space, Ecostar Hughes, so Ecostar Mobile, the European subsidiary of yeah. Ecostar Hughes, is going to launch a pan, -Euro pan European uh, coverage uh, offering. Okay. Nutelstat is going to offer a global coverage. So stay tuned. 2022 will be the year for LoRa LoRa One satellite. Fantastic. Well, Remy, thanks again so much for taking the time. This has been been a fantastic conversation here. Um, we look forward to kind of staying staying in the loop and seeing how things progress. Cool. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching the IoT for All Media Network. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell notification so you get our latest videos as soon as they become available. But other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.